is Amanda from The Fundamental Home. Today is Wednesday, and that means it's Worthy Wednesday, and we are in a series about anxiety and depression. Um, I have talked for the last three weeks about how I've dealt with anxiety and depression in my life. Again, I'm just a mom, I'm not a professional. If you need a professional, seek professional help. And don't be ashamed of it, because we all need it from time to time. But um, I've talked about some ways that I've dealt with it, first being diet, nutrition, and sleep, just basically taking care of yourself because birds. Anyway, because this is Worthy Wednesday and we're talking about how you're worthy of your own best effort and you are. So put the effort into taking care of your basics. Then we talked about blocking things that stress you out and letting them in slowly because there are some anxiety and depression triggers in your life and just how to deal with those. Uh, last week we talked about faith and I talked about how uh, faith helped me and it's helped some other people that I know deal with anxiety and depression in their lives. And if you have a story of how faith helped you, I'm going to link that one right here. Uh, go to that video and leave a comment about if faith has helped you with anxiety and depression because I think that is that video is really helping people. So um, make sure that you leave a comment there because we would love to hear how faith has helped you deal with your anxiety and depression. But this week we're going to talk about connecting with others um, because I think one of the biggest problems people struggle with when they have anxiety and depression is isolation. Yes. We get to the point that we get anxious and depressed and what do we do? We stay in the house. We don't go anywhere. We don't do anything because frankly we don't feel like it and we don't even want to put the effort on to get dressed and go out of our house. Right? Everybody been there? That is the exact opposite of what you should do. Right? That is your flesh working against you. <laughs> you know, that's like when you really know you need to go on a diet but you just want to eat chocolate cake. You know what I mean? When you know you need to get out and be around people because it'll help your anxiety and depression, but you just want to go stay in the bed, okay? It's not good for you. You have to exercise some self-discipline here. It's not gonna feel right when you do it at first. It's, it's gonna be a struggle but it's what you need. You need to get out. You need to see people. I've talked about one of the other videos, Meg from uh, Little Women, and uh, she had twins, right? And she, she was really struggling with some stress in her life. And so her family purposed to come and intervene and, and help her and be with her and spend time with her. And let me just say here, if you are not struggling with anxiety and depression, but you know someone who might be, make the effort to go and intervene on their behalf. You know, go spend some time with them. If you know someone who's been sick for a long time, or um, like with Ricky, um, when Ricky was sick, and that was the whole point of, the whole um, reason why I struggle with anxiety and depression, I wasn't seeing anyone because I was so busy going back and forth to the doctors. Um, I really appreciated people who sent me Facebook messages or came to see me or just generally did anything that was helpful. I can't tell you how much that stuff meant to me. I, when my friend, my, I had a very good friend who had breast cancer, and um, she couldn't go out in public very often because she couldn't be around the germs. Um, so I knew that if I was going to see her, I had to see her regularly so that she was accustomed to my germs, if that makes any sense. So I put it in my schedule when she was going through chemo. I saw her every single week at the same time, every week. We spent a few hours together, and I think... You know, I think it was helpful to her and it was helpful to me, you know, more helpful to me than her really, <laughs> because I just, I was so worried about her and, and she's like my, she's my friend, but she's my family and I love that woman. And I just, you know, I couldn't stand the fact that she couldn't get out and be around people and she was going through this difficult time. So if you know someone who is, step in there and make that happen. It's going to be more of a blessing to you than it is to them. It really was. I, I will never forget that time that we spent together and just, I didn't really walk through that with her. Like she walked that. I just kind of was there as a witness to see what happened. And the Lord, I mean, I have no words. It was a blessing and she's in remission. Okay, side note. But so yes, that's what others can do. But if you are struggling with anxiety and depression and you don't have anyone who can necessarily step in and intervene for you, then you are going to need to just grab a hold of that thing and get out there and take a hold of it yourself. 
and it's not gonna be easy. It's not gonna be easy. And maybe you wanna do it little by little. You know, maybe it's just interacting with folks on the internet. Maybe get on a great Facebook group. There's one called Frugal Family Food. I think you'll like it. I'll link it in the description box. Um, but maybe it's just getting on there and interacting with folks who are interested in the same things that you're interested in. You know, there's all kinds of Facebook groups out there. There's ones on homesteading. There's ones on scripture reading. I'm, these, I'm naming the ones that I'm in, right? So I'm in all these different Facebook groups on things that I'm interested in. And we're always on there talking about different things. Don't get on ones where people are arguing. If people are arguing, get off of that one. That will not help your anxiety and depression, okay? Find one where people are pleasant and nice and encouraging one another. And if someone does happen to say something offensive because that happens, just uh, hide that particular comment, okay? You don't need to see that particular section and let the administrator know. But, um, but you know, maybe that's just a simple way without actually leaving your house to start getting some interaction. Um, then there's the phone. You know, there's I, people text now, but you can still pick up the phone and actually physically call a person and talk to them. Or you could Skype or do Google Hangout or whatever it is you do. But some kind of interaction with people. Just reach out, reach out. Uh, but I think the best thing that you could do is actually physically interacting with someone in person. A great place to do that is church. I, I, I highly recommend if you are in a, some kind of group, I highly recommend going to your local church. Go to your local church. You know they're meeting every Sunday or Saturday or Wednesday or whatever day it is they're meeting. They're always there. There's always people there that are uh, in agreement with you. Uh, go there and don't just go and show up and listen and leave, okay? You gotta actually talk to the people. It's called fellowship. You know, a couple fellows in a ship, right? Get a hold of that thing, uh, get get out there and connect with people. You have to purpose to do it. But that's one of those ways that you don't have to really um, try too hard. These, these are things that you know that are already there, that already exist, that you could be a part of, okay? But, but then there's also reaching out and saying, you know, hey, would you like to go have some lunch to a friend, okay? It's, it seems intimidating, but you can do it. You can say, hey, let's go have lunch, or, a lot of my viewers are frugal, right? Maybe you can't afford to take someone out to lunch. Say, hey, why don't you come over and have lunch with me? Do that. And you're gonna say, my house isn't clean. Clean your house. <laughs> Make it happen, stop making excuses. Do it, right? I'm that friend, I'm that friend. I'm the get up, make it work friend. I'm not the, oh, that's so sad. No, do it, clean your house. At least clean the rooms so they can come in. You can shut all the other doors, right? Clean your house, invite a friend over, purpose it. It'll give you a reason to do it. It might be helpful for you to find someone to reach out to who maybe needs someone to reach out to them. I mean, look around because there's probably someone that you know that you see that really needs a friend themselves. okay? And if you put them before you, then it'll be easier for you to reach out to them. If you say, oh, you know what, she's really hurting. Uh, she just had hip replacement surgery. She can't really get out of the house. I'm gonna go see her and see if I can clean her house for her or something like that, something to be helpful. Go, do it. You, well, you will be surprised how good that will be for you and not for them, honestly. Uh, put others first. Another thing that you can do is volunteer. Volunteer, they're always looking for volunteers in the community. Find a place that you enjoy helping and volunteer there. My sister is into um, animal rights activism and she helps with different um, animal sanctuaries. Like she even ran a 5K for an animal sanctuary, not her thing, but she did it for them and she was happy to do it, okay? You don't have to run a 5K, you could just go play with the puppies and kitties at the <laughs> shelter or whatever. But find a place to volunteer that suits you. My local thrift store, has volunteers come in and help sort clothes. And I gotta tell you, if I had the time, that's where I would be my friends because I'd be going through stuff like, ooh, look at this, for me, right? <laughs> but it's also helping others. It's also helping others and I'd be making friends, right? But the point is to connect with people who are interested in the same things that you're interested in, you know? Don't, don't join something that you're not super interested in. Find something that suits you and go do that. 
You know, there's a lot of, like, there's an arts council in our county, and they get together every so often and do art together. I mean, if you look around, if you ask around, and you need to, because you are isolated, stop doing that, then you will see that there's opportunities out there to connect with folks that you are missing, right? And if there's not, if you live in a town of like 100 people and there's nothing, make something. Uh, there's a, a story in the uh, Little House on the Prairie books. I always go back to books, but the, I mean, that's who I am. And the Little House on the Prairie books that they were really bored one winter. So the men got together and decided that they were gonna do uh, literaries. And so every Friday they, had some, they planned something for like so many weeks until people were tired of it, you know? But they had someone come in and sing for them and they had a spelling bee. You know, if you can't, if you're not seeing anything, create it. Create it. And you're going to say, but nobody wants to do that. People are bored. <laughs> and they don't want to spend money for things. Of course they would do it. If you put something out there, people, people come to it. Particularly if it's free. People, people are going to come. So just do it. Make it happen. Make it happen. So um, I thought this was really important. This is going to be probably one of the shorter videos. But I thought it was important to mention because I think a lot of times people struggle with anxiety and depression and they, it goes on longer than it needs to because they isolate themselves. So I want you to stop isolating yourself and purpose to connect with others. I want you to get out there. I want you to connect. I want you to put others first, find some volunteer opportunities, do whatever you need to do, but get out and stop, you know, stop thinking just about yourself. Because that is what's going to drive you crazy. I wasn't really doing this like to be crazy, but you know what I mean. Just all about you. Because a lot of times we get caught up in the things that are stressing us out. Put all of that aside. And focus on others. And my husband, who struggled with uh, depression for years, said that whenever he starts to feel it coming on, like if he's at work and he's starting to feel stressed or anxious, he will actually purpose to find someone. He works in a public place. A purpose to find someone to talk to and you know say hey how are you be a blessing and, and just encourage someone else it's a great thing to do so that's it for this week um, don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you liked these if you like these videos and they're helpful to you um, leave a comment down below if you have any advice on how people can connect with others when they are feeling isolated and anxious and depressed because I think that's one of those things they struggle with they're like okay that's a great idea but how can I do it so if you have any ideas leave those in the comments below to be helpful to others and um, next week we are going to talk about getting busy busyness it helps it does so um, this that's it for this week thank you for watching and I'll see you next week <laughs> bye hey thanks for watching I'm really glad you came to visit us here at the fundamental home make sure if you enjoyed this video that you click the like button and also click subscribe right below me for more videos coming into your inbox all the time and also, if you enjoy social media, we've got links up at the top here for Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, all the other fun things. And check out thefundamentalhome.com for more information about what we're doing all the time and how we do it, because there's way more details there. And uh, here, over to the right, we have some videos that I recommend. So thanks again for coming by, and we'll see you next time. Bye!